What's up, Lemon Heads? Welcome back to another episode of From the Yellow Chair. This is going to be a little bit of a special episode. Yeah. So before I get into it, I'm going to start this off by saying, I'm Emily, and, and I'm, I'm the mom oh. of Aubrey, Adley, and Anna. Yes, and I'm Crystal, and I'm the mom of Ray and Carter. So if you haven't picked up on this, this is going to be like a little like Mother's Day episode. Um, I know we have lots of mom, Lemonhead listeners out there, and um, just want to talk a little bit about how we can try to find some balance in our work-life balance and um, navigate through this season of life that we're in. Absolutely. We're going to talk about all things uh, mama-ing, but I think that dads can be listening too and apply the same thing. I just, I think as women, we take it a little bit more personally. So let's get into it. Let's sip some lemonade. Do it. So, Crystal, mm. mama of Ray and Carter. How old yes. are Ray and Carter? So, uh, Ray, which we call him Little Ray because I have all the Rays. So, there was Ray Sr. My father-in-law passed away last year of, of COVID. Well, actually in 2021 of COVID. Um, and then my husband's name is Ray Jr. And then we had our firstborn son. So, we call him Little Ray because that's a rapper name. Uh, so, Little Ray Williams. And, and he, that's not confusing with your brother Trey and Ray and And then my, my husband's brother is named Trey and they have a son named Lil Trey. So it's all the things <laughs> uh, to be confusing. So, But Lil Ray just turned 16 in February. So it's a whole different... It's kind of a little bit of a blessing because he drives and he's also kind. So that's helpful. He is. So he takes his younger brother, which is the epitome of no limit soldierness, um, <laughs> and we'll we'll take him around for him. And he, he allows his brother to go with him quite a bit. So then our second born son um, is actually 13 um, and he has super personality. So my oldest son is super chill, laid back, easygoing, very respectful little dude. Um, and then Carter's built like an m- offensive lineman. With the personality of a six foot tall quarterback stud on the field. So, quite the different personalities, but a lot of fun. Carter, I definitely describe him as Mr. Personality. Yes. He's got big talk and, like, he ain't scared of nobody. We'll go up to anybody, yes. start talking smack. And <laughs> yes, I'm like, son, you are the worst one on the team. We need to back it up, you know? So, um, but we do joke that our kids could also be named after, like, major life events for Ray and I. So, um, my husband, Ray, was a member of the National Guard, got deployed to Iraq and 2005 um went to iraq served there the whole year and then when he came back we got little ray because ray said he can't leave this world with nobody behind him so Aww. and so we call little ray could be called iraq um <laughs> and then he went through a dps academy to be a state trooper um and little ray and i were here so little ray was about two years old we went through that and so he graduates from dps academy and ta-da we have carter so i've got iraq and dps those are the names okay, <laughs> of my okay. children um after life events and so after that we were done and uh, our boys are, of course, the joy of everything that we do, but they're also difficult <laughs> in their own right, you know, so well, totally different, difficult than Emily. So tell us say, about yours. Yeah, we're kind of in the exact opposite. You have all all boys. All we boys. have all girls. Yes. So um, Aubrey just turned seven, Adley is five, and Anna just turned three. Um, Again, the last one. <laughs> that The last one, man. <laughs> You know, when they talk about that third child, well, first, three is a game changer. Yeah, because they outnumber you. (laughs) No, they for sure outnumber us. And then, like, the amount of laundry just exponentially went up. Like, I just feel like... Well, and your daycare bill, you and I laughed about uh, this. So, because they're all pretty close together in age. So, there was a time where we had all three in daycare. And all three in daycare was more than our mortgage. So, I'm like, yay, (laughs) you know. (laughs) You're literally like, ma'am, I'm keeping the lights on in this place. Well, and then people, like, so... Our, the middle child, she's about to go to kindergarten in the fall. And so we're like, yes, like <laughs> pay a raise. raise yeah. And people are like, oh, you aren't going to send her to private school? I'm like, no, we're Absolutely trying not. to get a raise here. Her like, education is not that important to me. <laughs> and no, no. But, you know, it's it, that's another thing that we all face is, you know, the trying to keep up with people, but not on the not on the, maybe the the tangible side of things, but more like oh my gosh, like should I take the hit of like financially? But does my kid need private school? Like do they need oh, yeah, tutors? Yeah. Should they be doing Kumon? Like what are all these things? Are my kids going to be left behind? Um, and so I t- I share this with Emily a lot. Like you're in such a different season than I'm in, and Emily's a crier, and so she's tender hearted about her kids, which we're not we're pretty strong every day. Um, about stuff but I'm not as much of a crier but like Emily will get emotional about her girls and I'm like listen it's just a season of life so but literally I don't know and there are people listening right now and you're gonna be nodding your head so if you're over here with the mama of teenagers you're nodding your head like gosh yesterday I was wiping boogers and you know giving hugs for field day for fourth grade and now I'm like do not 
run towards your brother with a knife. Like, <laughs> do not back into your brother like you're going to run over him. Like, like, so that things just change, you no, know. But, sure. but I always felt like this little bit of like, are my kids missing out on something? Like, did I not? Why do I not value their education enough to put them in private school? And, and uh, it's really about making your own decisions for your kids. No, for sure. I mean, that was a lot of flack. I remember getting, and it used to bother me at the time. Now it doesn't. But like, oh my gosh, you're going to put your kid in daycare? And I'm like. Yes, ma'am, for my sanity. (laughs) Well, that, and then also, like, there's a lot of benefits that, in my opinion, kids get exposed to in daycare. Like, my kids are pretty socially acceptable and like they can go anywhere they can go anywhere they're not going to freak out they're not attached to my leg and stuff and that's something that's important to me you know I want them to be socially little boss babes well yeah (laughs) and and then also like sometimes I can get on to myself like gosh I just work too much or like Mm -hmm. they see me working all the time and things like that but I'm like it's also probably a good thing for them to see like their parents working hard and to see that like they can achieve big dreams and stuff. And yeah. especially as a woman, like, they can do anything. You yes. Know? Well, you know, my sister and I were talking the other day, so I'm getting a little biblical for a moment. But <clears throat> there's this lady on Facebook, and she's from around this town, but, and they'll be posting all the time, like, I just, I mean, I just can never imagine working outside the home. And I'm just like, I roll because our convictions are totally different yeah yeah so i was never convicted to work from home i mean to not no, no to work, not work yeah, out of the thank home. you thank you to be at home i was never convicted in that the lord never said to me and i do feel like i i've tried to be in tune with the lord enough that if if i felt like the lord was strongly calling me to do that that i would have tried to submit to that um i'm not gonna say that i would have because uh, you know my person but sure. i would have tried to, yeah. to to do that but i just wish that everybody understood in, no matter what mama you try to be or daddy you want to be, stay at home dads probably get just as much flack. Like, he's sorry. He won't work. Well, at the end of the day, whatever your convictions are, are your convictions. No, absolutely. And the Lord yeah. gives different people different convictions. Um, and so I'll be honest. Like, you want to come see a ministry field? Come look at Lemon Seed Marketing. Mm. It's a ministry field. Um, and so there are people here that need love and attention and things like that. And I'm like, Emily, my kids are very well adjusted to um almost too well adjusted they you know i have to protect them a little bit from the world of things but for the most part my kids there's no anxiety with like oh i'm gonna go whether they're in the youth group or we're at school or we're on a different field trip or we're playing a new sport my kids are both pretty adventurous and and things like that but i think that's because they've always had to be like when they were two years old they were in a class full of you know eight other four-year-olds and they're learning to share and they're learning to play and they're learning to be social and then i'm social my husband's social. I mean, I'm talkative. I know our listeners are shocked by that. What? And Carter's Sorry. talkative, too. Uh, he and I could do our own podcast that would last three hours. We'd have to cut it off. But <laughs> but you're right. You know, just dealing with that. And that I don't have girls. Because let me tell you what I don't want to deal with. I don't want to deal oh. with cheerleader tryouts. I, I'm not looking forward to the teenage years. I, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with like, any kind of pregnancy stuff. I don't try not to deal I with know. it. So I threaten my children right now. I'm like, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> don't you go around playing games. Number one, that's the Lord convicts us to not live that way. But second of all, like, don't be playing games because the girls to me have a lot more at risk than you do. And I need you to be responsible. And um, but moving on from that, you know, do you teach your kids how to be independent at home? I sure try. Yeah. So it's a joke at my family. Like people say Crystal's kids were born feeding themselves. <laughs> So I'm like, I just joke all the time. Like, when you're two years old, you better be able to get in the car, get dressed and get in the car. Because <laughs> I see people now and I'm like, is that little boy seven years old? Oh, and you I'm, just helped him get all the way dressed like, ma'am, he's got to go to school no, and mean, live independently. I mean, I see it. And I again, I try not to judge people because I'm like, I don't want to be judged. But I'm like, Me neither. They, they need to be doing something different. But yeah. um, it's kind of funny you mentioned that I was listen to this comedian and they're like you know first kid you're like oh i'm so sorry like here let me make you a smoothie with like fresh organic bananas and he's like third kid rolls around he's like he's up on the counter making his own smoothie he's like i don't even know where this blender came from i think he bought it himself (laughs) from his side job you know yes i'm like that is so true that third one you know well and people are like oh it's you know you don't you don't do this you don't wash your kids clothes i'm like no ma'am no, ma'am, not a 16 and 14, 13 year old. Well, like, I look forward to that day. Like, bring I mean, it on. And listen, the point is, like, I need them to function as adults. Now, this is my way, y'all. Like, this is my way of training my children. This is right, the way that I right. feel like the Lord called me to lead my children. Okay. However, you lead your children is all for you. And you know what? I'll support you. If you want to be wiping 10 year old booties, that you wipe a 10 year old booty all yep. day long. Just, I can't help you with that, <laughs> but you knock yourself out. No, for sure. Yeah. So I, I tried, I've tried to teach them, like, in 
independence. And another reason is running your biz, your own business, like we run Lemon Seed, is not for the faint. It's absolutely and, and people not. are like, oh, my gosh, like it must be nice. I'm like, ma'am, if you only understood. I mean, the other day I was like, I'm sorry, Emily, I've got to leave. Carter has a ball game that starts in 15 minutes. And Emily's like, go to the ball game. So I'm running out of here, going to the ball game. And you know when I got there, he was dressed he had his ball bag. He was he had his Gatorade. And then when I get there, I'm videoing and doing all the mom things. And so it was important to me that they not be dependent in that way. Mm -hmm. Like I do want them. Like I expect to see my mama in the stands. Yeah. So if I'm in, when I am here, and I will prioritize travel as much as I possibly can for two things. I don't want to miss a ball game and award ceremony if I can help it at all. Yeah. And I also am trying not to miss church because I shouldn't prioritize everything else over my relationship. Again, my relationship with the Lord. And my pastor has been talking to us about like if you look up and everything like church is oh I'm going to take my kids today because everybody had a good weekend you know you may, people say church is a Saturday night decision right no oh, yeah um, and so you know I, I've always tried to teach my kids like you can get up and get dressed like nowadays you have an alarm clock you can have a phone but at the end of the day y'all need to be out of the house by 7 10 I'm gonna yell good morning I'm gonna talk to them <laughs> but my kids don't want to eat breakfast yeah and so Every morning they come see me in the morning before they leave. And when they leave, I just say, y'all have a good day. Let me know how you've got this tonight. You've got this tonight. Well, and part of that independence, like, definitely has to be taught. Like, so my kids are in a different season than yours. So, yes, like, right. mine, it is literally a, a struggle for them to put on their shoes. Now, yes. they want to be like, I know I can put on this shoe so much faster than you can right now. And, like, we are trying to get out of the door. Yes. I have an 8 a.m. meeting, you know. It's like, let me do it. But, like, I have to be intentional to let them try it so that mm -hmm. they can teach themselves to put on their own shoes. And so, so it's definitely a, a balance in where they want to be independent, but then also teaching them and letting them become and develop that independence. I, though, that's that's great advice. <clears throat> in my little Sunday school class, we do a rotation. And so, like, it's just very, I'm very aware of kids that do things independently for themselves because like I had a kid come up to me in Sunday school and he goes is this right and at first I was like what do you mean uh, were his shoes right like did he have them connected to the right foot the left and, and the so right. I can tell in the mornings that's probably what he has to ask his mom is this right because that's exactly what he did and I was like trying to you know how you're trying to decipher like what are you talking about because <laughs> one of them kept asking me for like a whale the other day and I was like huh? what does that mean because uh, you know it's not my kid so I'm trying to figure out um come to find out it was a a literal well out of a set of playthings, but it took me a minute to kind of figure it out. But it just makes me see, you know, if you want to see how independent your children are, watch them around other children. Oh, yeah. And yeah. again, not every kid is meant to be independent at five. My kids were naturally talkative and independent. So I, I think I just try to be patient with myself. Like I'm trying to figure it out too. But one thing I've learned is if I compare my children to other people's children all the time, like why are they not like, I mean, I'm super competitive. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, I would love for my kids to play competitive sports. My oldest one has zero interest in playing competitive. He would rather be in the stands cheering on his team, his friends. Um, he likes to play golf. You know why? Because it's the most chill sport that takes forever and 10 That's days. so little, right? Yeah. And that is so expensive. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> child, you chose a bougie sport. <clears throat> and then I've got Carter. They want to play every sport. They want to do anything they can do. And, you know, I've just learned, like, I need to enjoy where my children are. So that leads me to, to have grace with myself. Like, where am I? Like, mm -hmm. we are in a season as well. Emily and I are in a season at 41 and 13. How old are you, Emily? I am 32. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> but different seasons. No, for Not sure. just, a, but and here we are together, like, looking at each other every day. Like, how, what are we going to do about lemon seed? Because mm -hmm. lemon seed does great things and everything's great and wonderful. But, you know, we still have our own issues that we're trying no, to overcome. No, it's definitely not perfect. And if we didn't have issues, then I mean, we were being stagnant, you know? Yes. And so, and so, but we do, we try to keep each other accountable. Like, girl, you fly home early because it's your baby's birthday this weekend. You're trying to bake a cake. Emily over there making all their kids' birthday cakes. And at first, I'm like, that is such an admirable thing. Like, I really admire it. I talk about it all time that's how she knows i'm very i admire that about her like it's a passion for her to make her baby's birthday cakes i'm over Which here now like, by the third one i'm like uh, but <laughs> what did i do to myself no, uh, but i do enjoy it once i actually get into it you so know? you make their birthday cakes yeah. from hand now emily's artistic so like where i would go get a little debbie's box and we'd be having a whole <laughs> rectangular cake with those little sugar letters that say happy birthday emily's over there making like dalmatians and unicorns and stuff well, and like, you know, that was something that I remember my mom making my birthday cakes. Now, granted, they were like... Rectangles gonna, with sugar letters. Well, that or like, I'm going to buy this 
cake pan that's in the shape of a bunny and like yes. her star tip icing tip you know that was yes <laughs> hashtag 80s moms yes yes, yes. Uh, well, 90s from 90s mom i'm yes. sorry and look god bless <laughs> no but i remember that you know and um so that's just something i wanted to do with my kids and so like they enjoy like when their birthday parties are coming up we'll get on pinterest and look at like oh i want that cake or i want that cake and when you do it at your house i do it at my house so every single birthday party except for one has been at our house uh, well, and you know, it's, something, oh it's special well and like when we move out of that house like it's gonna be like oh, oh the like, birthday house when like we brought all three kids home to that house and it, look, it ain't even happening now, and yeah. she's tearing up yeah but what i'm <laughs> saying like it, those are core memories so oh, yeah. at the end of the day i think emily's kids are going to look up and be like my mom worked hard my dad worked hard but they always made time for us and it's not always that i can make time every single day for raven no, carter sure. so i'm not even going to pretend to lie and like there's women right now there are people listening they're like i know and i know there are dads listening that have had to miss a baseball game or they've had yeah. to miss something and it's because you're running a company that you can see the end goal and so you're like you know what if i can just make it 90 percent of the time the lord's going to take care of the 10 percent of the time that I can't be there you know but but those core memories like guys you need to be taking vacations with your kids yeah. and even if it's a staycation it's a vacation where you unplug and so like Emily we make a joke like I'm we're, my fa- I'm taking my family on a cruise and my husband and I went on a cruise because you know who really gets the bad end of the stick for me your is yeah. my husband um, because I give you know you're giving everything you have to work and then you give everything to your kids literally it's like ugh, can somebody not need me and like that tends to be our husbands both Chris and Ray who are both very very passive style of they can't help but be very chill yeah <laughs> very easy going and then there's crystal and emily that like wreck havoc on their life you know <laughs> but our husbands are like standing by us and they mm-hmm. do they fill in the gaps like emily bless her heart she's like are you picking up the kids or am i picking up the kids and i'm calling my husband like race truck and he needs gas will you meet him at the gas station like and our husbands are like what do you need us to do you know so but they're they do it out of love and honor and not just for us and what the lord calls them to do but just because they want lemon seed to succeed just as much as emily and i do and I think it's important that we realize, like, you can have the best of both oh, yeah. worlds. Yeah. I think you can. Um, now, well, I mean, it has to be your best, not yes. someone else's best. Your expectations, you know. like, some of y'all need to ease up on yourself. Yeah. Right? Some of y'all need to realize that that pile of laundry, my mama, you know, my mom is, my mom's house is clean all the time. When I go to my mom's house, like, if I saw it messy, I'd be like, is mom sick? What's happening? (laughs) You know, because my mom doesn't sit down. And I love, like, my mom, like, everybody will say, like, I wish my mom was your mom. I do, too. Because I think if people had a mama like I have, then the world would be a much better place. Oh, true. And so I'm like, Lord, if I can just be happy. I mean, my kids, this is not, it's a terrible story. But we we went to visit my grandfather, which would be my kid's great-grandfather. And they called him Daw. Okay, dog. That's just what Little Ray called him. He was like, my grandparents love my my. It's my grandparents. They loved my kids and they traveled with them and they helped me a lot while Ray was working DPS. Okay, so I had two littles and I was trying to work and all that. Well, um, my grandmother would just be like, "I'm going to take my kids. I'm going to take your kids to California." And I'd be like, "Oh my gosh!" But my mom has always been like who my kids love too so they love my grandmother and they love my mom so we were out visiting my grandpa which my kids remember but it's because we talk about it a lot because carter was only four years old <clears throat> or five years old when he passed away so anyway we're out at the graveyard and we're, we're all standing there and like oh this is where daw is buried and my kids are like tearing up and i'm like oh guys and they're like what are we gonna do when mama and nanny pass away mm. and i'm like hello what am i like, <laughs> what about what, what about me and they're like mom no like you know. you're fine but yeah. the what i'm what i'm proving a point here is like i have a tribe right and i'm blessed with that because emily said this yesterday when we were talking about some some um policies that we're putting in place at limits and she's like everybody doesn't have a mom or a grandma or even a close family member that can help them with their kids so i know that i'm blessed in that way because i'll tell you another one my sister will fight for my kids like they're her own i don't know for sure and i yeah. try to fight for hers and emily has a good um a good support system no oh, yeah as well and you know but ever y'all every one of us dads or moms our stories are very different mm-hmm. our work our work paths are very different our expectations are very different and so i just encourage moms like to some mom standards i am crazy i travel too much i'm gone too much like how dare i let my husband raise my kids you know yeah, yeah. and in the back of my mind my kids they might say oh you're traveling again and i'll tell them i am am i missing anything super important with you and like i try to be open with them like this is how we make a living no, for and sure. now they think they can go with me so like well next time i'm going you know i'm <laughs> like oh, you gonna go with me to you know, somewhere crazy like i'm going to this simple place but i have learned how to not 
it sounds bad. I don't mean buy their love, but I mean, I, I want them to see me investing in our time with them as well. Well, and that's also something that like, you know, because you work hard and, and make a good living, like you can provide them with so many more experiences yes. and opportunities that like they may not have had if you didn't work so hard for yes. those things and stuff. When not that money buys everything or that that's all that matters, but like that is a trade-off if you will to mom working so hard or dad working so hard and things like that absolutely so I said that to them the other day I said we're gonna go um it was literally I was traveling it was a really heavy travel time I was only home two days and it was rough and I was like feeling my feeling guilty because I was like oh my gosh more for my husband because I was like gosh it's just because Carter doesn't drive and so there's still you know there's still a lot of running around Carter's only 13 Okay, yeah, so yeah. I know I said that he's 13, but he's still only 13, right? Little Ray is still only 16. They're not adults, right? So they can't just roam wild and free. So there's still lots of expectations that we have. But I was like, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to Top Golf and we're going to go by the PGA store. Well, that was like fine. No, I can be gone for two more weeks. But what <laughs> I did, they don't know. Like, you know, the little saying that she thought we were just fishing. They don't know, but I sat right there and engaged with them while we talked about golf balls and golf clubs and swings and strokes and steps and shoes and all of those things. And I was 100% engaged with them and more than anything with my husband. No, yeah. But my husband and I went on this cruise for our anniversary. And you can ask Emily, it was before our Lemon Seed Conference. I was before, yeah, (laughs) in my feelings about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot go. And finally, like the Lord just revealed to me, like, you will go. Yeah. And it wasn't about the month. I mean, it, it, for me personally it's not about the money it's about my family seeing that I'm dedicated to making them a priority just as much as they help me make lemon seed a priority um so uh, my encouragement is you're doing a good job no for sure if yeah. you're being uh, now I know I'm religious on this but if you're being prayerful about how the Lord is guiding you to guide your children our children are on loan from the Lord right no, the Lord sure. said these two children are yours and I need you to guide them and lead them in the direction that I've asked you to do that for. And so when I do that and I look at my kids and like, and I put it in perspective, like they're on loan from the Lord. Like, am I doing this right? Mm-hmm. All I can do is be prayerful and do the best I, ever, I, I can yeah. um, and not be too hard on myself. Well, you know, and it's, I was listening to a podcast this weekend and it put kind of owning a business in a different perspective for me. Um, like you mentioned, like Lemon Seed is a ministry field here. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, just this past weekend, someone in our office who's like, Hey, I'm not a praying type, but like, I think you are like, can you pray for me? Yes. And it was very tough. It was like, I'd have never had that opportunity before yes. um, to, to meet this girl, you know, or things like that. So anyways, that was one thing. But like, I was listening to this podcast and it was like, sometimes as Christians, almost like talking about money or profit or having a really successful business, it's almost like taboo. Like, yes. uh, like, you know, um, money, money is the root of all evil. And it's like, no, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. And so, but they put it this way is like. Yeah, we should be looking to have these excellent businesses that are dominating these spaces and being profitable so that you can be generous and do these other things. And so because like if we're not going to do it, if the Christians aren't going to do it, there's someone else who does have the love of money and that is greedy. That's going to take over that space. And so like, why not let it be a Christian that's going to do these things and be able to make all these other opportunities and invest in ministries and stuff to uh, absolutely you know when I, and I my sister and I were just talking about this you know like every time I'm always looking like what can I do for my church like mm-hmm. what does my pastor need yeah. what is our what is our ministries need you know and and again you know I look at what 33 little seeds as we call them out there and they're all a lot of them are very young and like they're figuring out life and they're figuring out being mamas and they have two people to go to like they can go to Emily and I mean bless their hearts you know everybody every mom on here like they don't know what's about to happen (laughs) and so we're like we're so excited for you and they're like I'm gonna use organic diapers and I'm gonna like make my baby's food and we're gonna work from home in a collaborative butterfly shield and I'm like listen and I'm like okay well call me after you have your baby and they're like they're wonderful beautiful little mamas and they're one and it's precious to watch it but you you and I know Emily and I know like the stresses that are coming from that and being a mom is wonderful being a dad is wonderful but it doesn't mean it's easy absolutely and the stresses just change right so if you think you have problems without without kids and being 25 wait till you're 40 and you got these kids looking at you and you're like oh god (laughs) like i'm (laughs) responsible for like keeping you alive and things so like stay over here you know in these lanes but i think my biggest encouragement today is and i've mentioned it a couple of times like Moms and dads that are running these businesses and owning these things, you need to give yourself grace. Yeah. The Lord gives us grace. You need to give yourself grace. But some of us probably do need to hear, like, 
realign your priorities again. Mm -hmm. Keep your priorities in check because it is easy when you're workaholics to work all the time. So you might see me. I might be logged onto my computer at 1030 at night. You know why? Because I was sitting at a ball game from 745 to 930 last night watching Carter strike out once and get a good hit once and tag somebody out at first base once. But on the way to the car, we talked about it and I was fully engaged and not on my phone and not. I mean, don't get me wrong. In the back of my head, I'm like, this is what I need to do tomorrow. And I get this. And what am I going to wear? Because I have a podcast and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I was watching and I could talk to him about the game. So sometimes I just need to reprioritize well, myself. And like prioritizing that quality over quantity. So like yes. you may not have as much quantity of time as someone else does. But like when you do, you're going to make that good. You're going to engage with him in the conversations that he wants to engage with. And yeah. talk about the ball game and, and the major plays that he made and things like that. It's maximizing that quality the smaller quantity that you have to make it more quality well then i think when you're young like like emily is and her family's young um i think it's about trying to figure out how to find patience Mm. right Mm. because Mm. when you come home from work (laughs) patience is not the first thing on the level of like what i've got willing to share patience is the last thing i really have um so my mom will be like you're not very patient with and i'm like no i want to slap his face off but you know especially when my kids start like where are we going to eat and can you can we go here and can we go there i'm like me make another decision so you know well that i have decision fatigue but i'm also like listen we're not spending any more money (laughs) and then i'm like that's fine let's get in the car let's go to tia juanita's it'll be 120 dollars and then i've got guilty like i should have cooked dinner you know so i do try to have patience but i know when your kids are little and they're like i want to tell you a story um um <laughs> you're like get on with it come on now <laughs> spit it out <laughs> you know so and carter's that way and like I, this is one example i caught myself the other day so my kids play golf carter made it to where he can go to a a travel golf tournament in florida so you know me i'm like oh my god like freaking five thousand dollars and we've got to travel but i had done it for little ray mm. so little ray had done it well it was all it was all exciting then because we were like oh my gosh it's so exciting so when carter comes in now he comes so i'm in the bathtub so he's like mom so he's hollering at me through the door so i put a towel on and i'm like yes so he comes in there he's like so um will you buy my ticket to florida and i was like i don't know carter i don't know if we're gonna do that or not okay and he turns and walks out so then i sat there and i cried because i was like why did i steal his joy about that you know why because i'm frustrated with my people at work or whatever was going on you know i'm frustrated with something that happened at work and now i just shot his little dreams down so then i get out of the bathtub and then i didn't want to be like sorry i shot your dreams down so then i'm like hey come see me so he comes to my room he's like ma'am i said so you're you're you made it to the so then i just pretend like i never said it and he just went right (laughs) along with it and i said so i was looking at it and it looks like we're going to be gone from friday he's like yes ma'am and bubba you know he calls my his brother bubba and sorry texas texas y'all can hate on me if you want to but he's like well bubba can be my caddy and Aww. I was like, yes. And I said, I'll order. So then I just played it off. And I was like, so what hotel were you going to stay? So I, I, I recentered myself because you know what? That was a fail. That was a mom fail. It wasn't Carter's fault, right? And he still deserves the same joy because, you know, when you get that first one, everything's new. The first time they walk, when they talk, when they go to kindergarten, they graduate kindergarten. And if you're not careful, by the time you get to that second one, you're like, yay, kindergarten graduation, you know. No, yeah. But I try to remember to celebrate every single success and showcase, GT showcase day and all of that because Carter cannot be second fiddle. He's got to have his own fiddle, his own his own member of the band. So well, here we go again, going to Florida with just as much excitement, you know. And and I, I've made it a big ordeal, you know. Even though it's going to cost me money, um, but more than anything, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm already gone like two weeks before that from work. And like now I'm going to be gone. So I went ahead and told Carter. I said, so what Mom's going to do is I'm going to work on Friday from my computer, and all I'm doing is setting the expectations yeah, of, yeah. you know, I'm already off because we're going on that cruise, and and my kids start understanding work life balance themselves. Sure, because yeah. let me tell you what a lot of our team can't do they they can't figure that out or they think they're entitled to go off and be off every single yes. time that they... um it's a mental health thing which don't get me wrong i do think there need to be a lot of light brought to mental health but i need to teach my kids now how to number one how to live with disappointment okay mm-hmm. how to not be given everything that they think they deserve number two i want to teach them that they've got to overcome and yeah. battle through a headache a cold all these different things battle through those things and I also want to teach them how to be a kind loser and winner mm. so there's a difference in being respectful in those things and listen y'all that is hard right now because everything is about like even if you watch major league sports and I'm not really trying to hate on it but when they hit a home run what do they do some kind of like bougie little step down kneel down moonwalk yeah yeah you know and I'm like 
it's fine and it's fun, but it's not a respectful thing always. So anyway, those are hard things to teach your kids. And so that's what I'm trying to teach my kids. You're trying to teach your kids how to tie shoes. Well, patience you know, level's all different. It's funny that you say that. We're going to a um a parenting Bible study, if you will, at our pastor's house. And, you know, he kind of opened up the first session was like, what kind of questions do you think kids are asking nowadays? You know, and I know a lot for the teenagers is like, you know, who am I? What's my identity? Like kind of, and my kids are like, why do I have to brush my teeth? You know, (laughs) (laughs) so it's different, but like, I know it's coming. Yeah. And so just embracing the season that we're in, you know, it's hard when they're little, but like, I know there's other harder challenges or different challenges when they get older and they're teenagers and, Fighting over each other's boyfriends and clothes and yes. things like that. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Every day, uh. thank you, Lord, for these boys. I will buy <laughs> boutonnieres and suits all day long to not yeah. have to. But, you know, it's it's a blessing in a different way. Like, yeah. you also get to be the mother of the bride and mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. grandmother of the ba- of the girl that's having the baby. Like, I'm over here like, I hope to, I hope, and I pray every day for my son's wives. Not out of, more than anything that they love the Lord and they're going to take, because like, I'm like, you're going to be the mama of my grandchildren. Oh, so yeah, like, yeah. that's important to me. And it's important to me that, that I get to be a part of those things because I, I mean I have nieces that I love dearly and I will act like I'm the mother of the bride when they get married okay <laughs> I better get a dress Ava Nash she knows um but I'm just saying like there's just a different like the Lord has given me and given Emily like this wonderful opportunity and so I encourage people to if you don't know the Lord and what he can do for you and your children I encourage you to find that because I wonder every day how people live without the Lord Mm. Um, a lot of people don't even know what they're missing. No, for you sure. Know, because yeah. they're battling this world. Mm-hmm. Because people that don't have the Lord, they're they're battling this situation of the the world, the earth, right? And the the Bible tells us that's not where our battles are. And so I just encourage you, like, battle for your children more than anything on your knees, praying to the uh, Lord. That's it. 1, about your kids, about their spouses, about their friends group, and praying for your, the mamas and baddies that are in your group. I mean, I pray for my brother because, mm. you know, Trey's in a very difficult season right now. People yeah. people probably look at it and don't think that um, because, again, if people think you have any amount of money, they think you don't have problems, and it's just not true. Yeah. You know, and there's stress levels that are different. I mean, my brother has kids the same age as very close to the same age as mine and you know he's got a daughter that's about to be driving and his wife stays at home to, to and takes care of their kids and you know one's got some anxiety and one's got you know and they've just got all these different things and my sister her husband's gone a lot you yeah. know with his job and you know my sister's raising two kids that have some lear- a learning disability nothing major but enough where she's trying to stay on top of it and you know like every mama and every daddy has a reason but the reason that we need to be prayerful about ourselves is again our kids are on loan yeah yeah and um i just encourage you listen because we go crazy in here and we'll be like get out of here and go take care of our kids but at the end of the day we encourage all the mamas in honor of mother's day and things like that like mama you're doing a good job no for sure 1000 percent. give yourself some grace yes and and what's right for your family is right for your family don't compare it to anyone else's absolutely so guys hey thank you so much for listening to a mama episode of from yes. the yellow chair if you really enjoy our show we'd love for you to share this episode in your social groups uh, follow us on all of our social platforms and leave us a review anywhere you're listening to this podcast so thank you so much for sipping some lemonade. See you next time.